Hey, this is Jared Cochran with Family Church. Welcome to our podcast. I'm excited that you're here. I hope that God moves through this message to reach you so he can move through your life. Be sure to share and subscribe so that we can reach the world with God's word. Enjoy the message. Welcome back. Another wonderful, wacky, waving, inflatable, arm flailing Wednesday. And uh, we're excited to have you here on The Family Room. This Thank should be girls. an interesting one. Yeah, the little, little car guys. Uh, while we get going, <coughs> let us know where, we're, where you're watching from. Where we're I always talk from. too fast. I always talk you too don't fast. do it on Sunday. Well, yeah, I do, because I'm a little bit, 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 and it starts to sound like Porky <laughs> the Pig. Watching too much uh, Looney Tunes lately with the kids. Um, Kelsey's watching from the softball field. They're having practice right now. Again, let us let us know where you're watching from on this uh, really warm Wednesday. Oh, That's dude, I'm I, over it already. I should have done. I was on the bike today, and it sitting at a red light waiting for it to change, and you're like, are you kidding? I kept watching the um, temperature on my dash just go up. Yeah, it's just hotter and yeah. hotter. Every I'm time happy. you walk outside, you're like, Argh. Yeah, I'm, I'm uh, fortunately glad to not be working in that anymore. I got to move this just a little bit. There we go. Um, yeah, so we've got, for the announcements this week, uh, tomorrow, May 9th, uh, is the Women's Fellowship Night for- 6.30 p.m. For uh, this Who's month. talking? Do you know? I don't you know, know who what? the guest is. They, they didn't tell me this month who the guest really is. So Let's ladies, see. show up in the event room. We don't know who's going to be there, but they did That's tell me today to set out additional tables. So it must be, they must be expecting a, must be. a crowd. So y'all, tomorrow night, Thursday night- be there at six thirty. It should be fun. Yes, uh, yeah. It's always a, always a good time. Um, and then, really, the last thing for May is um, May eighteenth is Youth Movie Night Come from uh, six to eight p.m. for just the youth. And I don't I don't think there's anything else going on soon for May. I don't think there's anything special. Mother's or Day. Anything. It was a joke. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm like, Lord have mercy. <laughs> the boy is gonna get a shot. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there. Um, you know, on, on Sunday, obviously, uh, this year is going to be you delivering it's gonna be, the word. I'm digging it. This year, uh, for the first time in years, I'm the speaker. Uh, I haven't done this for years. Uh, we were looking back in the memories today on Facebook, and over the last several years, how it's Kathy been doing th- something and somebody else doing something and additional programs and that kind of thing. But this year, we're going to go after it straight after Mother's Day. And listen, uh, join us, be in the building or online, because we're not going to we're not going to try to skirt anything. Your Mother's Day has been kind of, you Is know. Is that a pun? Was that like a, a women's pun? Skirt. It's been minimized a little bit over the years because, you know, of all of the issues and families and that kind of thing. But I, you know what? I think restorations are happening in families, and I think people yes. are ready to get back to just obeying God and honoring mothers. And I've already seen them on Facebook and social media this week, people already talking about their moms and honoring their moms. So join us. It's going to be great. I believe God's going to do It'll something be, it will really be special. a good time. And uh, did we do Donut. The, yes. Okay. Yeah, we have the donut food truck for Mother's Day this uh, this Sunday. Um, I'm looking forward to that. Even Come on. I myself am not a mother. Uh, I do like donuts. Um, <laughs> I am not uh, somebody that eats so clean that I'm miserable miserable with life. I, uh, God uh, made food taste good, and he gave us the ability to make food I'm going to have some. Good. I'm going to have one. And I'm going to eat delicious meals. Let's go. But uh, we are here tonight to discuss Surrender Sunday. the Soundtrack, Sunday's Message on anxiety that I gave and uh, what great title. Where'd the title come from? I don't remember. Yeah, I don't remember. I like I said Sunday. I started typing it in um, January because mm-hmm. on my I don't know if your your notes app does it, but on Evernote you can look at the history of when you have logged yep. in and typed on stuff, uh, and it's actually nice too because if you mess something up, it keeps. Um, little backup files of the other thing you can restore it to an earlier (laughs) date. But yeah, I started it. um, I made the joke about it, but here on the family room, I started it in January. I think it was like the 30th or something. And I got a little bit on the first point, which was just remain. I got to the second point, um, which was the request section. And that's when it kind of just like, it was like the faucet just turned off Mm -hmm. and I hit the brick wall and I joked about it on here with you and everything about getting too much anxiety to finish it. 
Learn. and uh, realized God was not taking me that way. Mm-hmm. And then uh, this message, like I said, Sunday was fully going to be um, a different one. I don't want to give it away for when I eventually preach it, hopefully. <laughs> but uh, I was, you know, headstrong going into that, and I had a whole bunch of stuff, and I sat down to compile it all together. And same thing, it was like brick wall, and I, I was like, all right, well, let's just go through and see if something stands something out to jumps me. Up. And uh, this one, I don't really know. I don't know what it was. I just clicked on it, and I was like, okay. And then I read through it, and it all kind of, it was like it just turned right back on and mm-hmm. whoosh, went to town on it. Well, what we do in the family room is take it and break it down and break it apart. We like to give you guys a little backstage glimpse at things that we do. So let's do that right off the top. Somebody (laughs) asked you, um, how did you feel after delivering that particular message? It was a message on anxiety, mental health issues, depression, all of those things. (laughs) I felt... um I Depressed. Felt, yeah. So the back here's the backstage family room. And I don't mean this for like a pity party or anything. I don't need your your pat on my back. When when I got done and I walked off, I wanted some water. And then as soon as I got through the door, I was just like, that was the worst sermon <laughs> ever in the history of ever. Like all in my head, I was just like, that was terrible. Like yeah. I want, I was like, can I just hide out now, here? Why? Why? Why was I it don't know. Here? I don't. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I just felt just like I feeling? just. It was just a feeling that it was just like. I don't know. I just mm-hmm. felt like absolutely miserable. Like no I had preachers done, ever feel like that. Yeah. No. <sighs> we all walk off and go, man. That yeah, was no, awesome. No. No. That is. And talking to you about it, and for the family room. Uh, I've already come to learn that anytime that happens is when, to me, it is God reminding you that yes. this isn't about you, it's about him. Uh, so I count it, you know, it's nice, like, hey, thanks for the the humble reminder that, you know, it's not about me, it's not for mm-hmm. my glory, it's all about him. So I just hope that I did him justice, which mm-hmm. I got a lot of comments on it, mm-hmm. um, you know, and everybody was positive, but it was, yeah, I was just like, I, I, that was terrible. A lot of amazing comments that people were saying it was the exact word that I needed to hear. I had a guest with me in church that day that doesn't normally come to church, and they were amazed at how you handled that story, how you handled that sermon. Uh, people that don't normally comment were making, I mean, there was a lady that um, stopped by the office yesterday. Uh, Mom and Kelsey and I were here, and uh, she was going on about it, and it was mm-hmm. something that she needed. So clearly it was yep. something that a lot of people needed to hear. Uh, I just had to feel like I got hit by a bus or something. I don't know. It was <laughs> it was the weirdest. I, do I don't know. I was time. just like, wow, that was that was terrible. I did so bad. Mm-hmm. and um, I do that all the time. It was weird. But, yeah, it was uh, apparently it was a great, according to everybody else. The word for the moment. Uh, you know, I even sat and I was like, I'd rather not even do the family room on it because I just want to <laughs> distance myself from that entire situation. Uh, yeah, it was just it, it was weird. But. And it goes right back to being as one long of the as it ones that people needed was what God needed said, and you know He felt that I did a good job. Um, so I sat on the front row and I wrote as many notes as I could. If you guys were watching and you were here, or you have some notes you want to throw in, some comments, quotes, whatever spoke to you. Anxiety comes from tr- not from thinking about the future, but trying to control the future. That was good. Uh, yeah, I don't even remember where that came from. <laughs> You said that's it. what that's what is like terrible about uh, starting it so long ago, mm-hmm. and I, oh. I can't remember if that was a quote or if I wrote it down because I highlighted it, um, but I, I didn't write anyone's name, so I don't I don't think it was a quote. I think that one was. I saw several a people God message that that did that quote. They wrote it and they sent it in a comment on Facebook. Anxiety comes not from thinking about the future, but from trying to control the future. Because we never, I was talking, um, I was talking to the youth about it actually last night. We don't, we never try, we we never, I'm sorry, we never worry about, well, we don't never, I'm trying to figure out how to word this. We, more often than not, we're not worried about what is going on right this moment, right now, right in this time. We're always worried about the future, you know, Mm -hmm. am I going to, am I going to get this next job? Am I going to get the promotion? Am I going to get passed up for this job? Or is my business going to go under? Am Mm -hmm. I going to get the divorce? Uh, you know, are we going to lose the baby? Uh, am I going to preach a terrible sermon? <laughs> it's always, it's always uh, something in the future and wanting to control it, you know, with any type of situation with, with your job or your performance or something with, with a court case or whatever it is. We're always trying to cling on to the control, yes. trying to hold on to it as tight as we can because 
this just the thing, like, like I said, you know, with God, like we, I don't, we never want to really relinquish it all into mm-hmm. his hands because mm-hmm. for whatever dumb reason, we think that we can still hold on to it mm-hmm. and do enough of in, in it, in enough of it in our strength that we start to believe since we don't have enough strength that we believe that God won't have enough strength to do it. And that obviously isn't further from the truth. Right. And it's just, we have such a hard time. I was just trying to truly live in the moment mm-hmm. and let God take all of our anxiety, let God take all of our worry mm-hmm. and just, you know, put it at his feet and let him handle it in his time, in his way, for his will. Uh, and again, that's not just, you know, quitting your job and not trying sitting to control back on the sidelines because it's, it's not we're, controlling it. We're masters at it. We like to try to control our own destiny and control our own future. And when you're in control, that means that by definition, he is not. You said anxiety is one of the most common mental disorders, affecting one out of every five. Was that what you said? Yes, it was um, one out of every five. It's uh, yeah, the, they are the most common mental illness in the wow. U.S. Uh, affecting at the time of this writing, whenever it was, affecting nearly twenty percent of the population. And that's why I said one in five, because in a church with four hundred seats, there was at least. 76 people by that, Mm -hmm. uh, that would be dealing with anxiety. And obviously that number is, I would say, astronomically higher, um, especially with, uh, you know, the the pandemic that happened for a couple years and then just the state of the country right now and Mm -hmm. inflation, all that stuff. Everybody's anxious about something in some Mm -hmm. facet of your life. Everybody's worried about something. Right now, probably somebody watching that's anxious about something, thinking about the future, trying to think about controlling. And according to that also, uh, women are twice as likely. More than twice as likely. Yep. To have depressive disorders. To have, yeah. To now, to have anxiety I wonder why. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. No? I didn't dive that deep into it. Um, I well, I'm, I have a degree in that, so I wouldn't say that it's because men are simpletons and women are weak. It's just simply the, the DNA, the foundational makeup of how we are made, that women, that's how they deal with things. They think about them, and sometimes they overthink them, but they think, 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 and that overthinking can lead to depressive disorder because you yeah. feel overwhelmed by it. And a lot of it, too, could probably, you could probably say... Um, because men, we have a harder time opening up and sharing our feelings. So mm-hmm. it could be that we're equal, but men just refuse to admit so. it and refuse to take part of in the survey. And, you know, we always try to, oh, we hold it all together because, you know, we've got, I got a job to do and all this kind of stuff. And they refuse to admit it. And in reality, they're just suffering in silence and their mental health is going straight down the toilet. We wander around in our worry. <laughs> like and that he one. is at the finish line of your fear. Somebody put that in the chat. We wander Wandering around, around in our, our worry, worry, and he is at the finish line of your fear. I had to write that? that down. You had to write that down? Yeah. Oh, the, there it is. Especially the finish line part, and he's at the finish line of your fear. So when you finally get to the, the end of that thing, he's going to be right there going. Right? That's what I was, the whole thing. Like, he, we're wandering around in our worry. We're walking around aimlessly, freaking out about everything, worrying about everything, having anxiety about everything. And we're wondering, where is God? You know, what's he going to do? When's he going to show up? But he already knows everything about our situation Mm -hmm. since he's omnipotent, omniscient, and omnipresent. He already knows your situation. He's controlling your situation. And he's already in your tomorrow. And while you're worrying, he's still working. But he's also waiting. He's waiting for us to get to, I guess, the end of our rope, really. And that would be... Tying into, you know, how you said that I said it. It's almost like you just, you, you I don't want to say like hit rock bottom, but mm-hmm. I think for a lot of people and a lot of times in our situations, God really just waits until we finally get far enough down the hole until we finally have nowhere else to go because we can't do it on our own anymore. And then that's when we finally give the situation up to him. And it's like, you know, why, why don't we immediately start off seeking him Mm-hmm. instead of waiting for everything to go. That Amen. was one of the points that I had said. You know, we wait for the seek suffering first. before we seek the Spirit. We wait for the mm-hmm. attack before we finally seek His anointing. And that's why the, the thing of the whole, uh, the disconnect leads to your discomfort that kind of thing. Next when you When you have to, mm-hmm. or when you don't have to, but we, we, we disconnect ourselves from God and we distance ourselves from God. And then obviously that leads to our discomfort. I mean, you see it. 
And it's just human nature, really. You see it with the Israelites. Mm -hmm. As soon as they get out of Exodus, I mean, they barely made it. We've talked extensively about it on here, but they barely make it out. And then as soon as Moses disappears for a couple of days, mm -hmm. oh, we're forgetting everything. And we threw this stuff in here, and now we're making... Aaron even says, these are the gods that brought you out of Egypt. And it was like, what? Where? What? <laughs> and it's just, we immediately start mm -hmm. to disconnect ourselves from mm -hmm. God. The minute everything is like coasting and it's good and everything's going, you know, peanut butter, jelly time, and it's all nice. And then, you know, we kind of back off from reading our Bible and we back off from our prayer life. And then we have disconnected ourselves completely from the spirit until it's a, a weekend warrior kind of thing. Yes, sir. And we go to church on Sunday, and that is the only time we feed ourselves. And then uh, we wonder why it's all falling apart. And it's completely because we disconnected ourselves. So the remedy is to Stay remain. 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 Okay, let me do a timeout right here just in the middle of this family <laughs> room thing. You're in school. You're working at Southeastern in Lakeland. You're working towards your master's degree. Are they teaching you literation? Literation? Yes. No. Because you, everything was an R. You gotta like remain. You gotta replace. You gotta remember. You gotta retain. And That's alliteration. I, oh, I should have brought the book. That's um, a Baptist thing, and I was wondering, sitting there listening to you do the R's, and I'm like, No, I love. I like wordplay. <laughs> uh, and I was actually listening to um, Robert Craig Rochelle. I was listening to one of his sermons um, the other day, and he was talking about that. He had something, and he was like, I learned, or they teach you in seminary. If you can say something with the same letters, yeah. it's easier for people to remember mm -hmm. it. But I, I mean, that, I still try to do that no matter what before I even heard that. I just so, love that. It makes it easier to retain it, to tie into that. It makes it easier to remember it. It, it makes it easier to just to have it get inside of you. Um, and <laughs> one of the books that I'm having to read right now for this current class uh, to study on the New Testament and this chapter that I'm in is all about like Jesus and his teaching and everything on that. And I didn't ever realize it, but he did the same thing. Who? Jesus. Talk to me. If you, I wish I had the book and I need to write it down, but I highlighted it. He didn't get like super, I don't want to misword it, but I'm pretty sure it was something like he didn't really get like super theologically deep. He didn't use all the big words. Mm -hmm. Um, when he said, like, he did the same thing that the prophets in the Old Testament did. They they all used super um, exaggerative statements. Like, if your right hand causes you to sin, chop it off because it's easier. Like, obviously, mm -hmm. that's he's not actually calling us to cut our hand off. He's using exaggeration to prove the point that this is nothing compared to how bad hell is. Right. Um, when he says that you're you're straining at gnats and swallowing camels, in the Greek, I think it's it's like, Galma and Galma, or it's like they're literally almost the same. They sound similar, mm -hmm. so that's why he says it. Mm -hmm. So Jesus literally did word prep, word play. There was a lot of things that he did where the words that he chose you wouldn't know it in English because they're completely different. But in the Greek or uh, Aramaic, Greek or Aramaic or both, he would he would choose the words that sounded the same. So he did the same wow. exact things. So it would get into it. He, that's why you he go to school. Exaggeration. Yeah, I didn't know that, and I read that. Uh, <laughs> yesterday i Come was like on. oh sweet so i'm i'm on the right track <laughs> that education is paying off if jesus did it i'm good with it yep it's a literation thing uh preachers have been doing it forever um I, but i don't hear it much in in pentecostal or charismatic churches full gospel churches it's very refreshing though but you're right because it does as i started to catch the r's then i started anticipating the next r so you started with remain john 15 and 7 15 was your seven passage if you remain in me and my words remain in you Mm -hmm. Um, you know, and that might be a weird thing to tie in, but I wanted to, well, I mean, you say, like you say, I'm, I'm a surgeon or whatever. I like to get this big idea and then just slowly peel the layers out until mm -hmm. we're down here at the, the core of it. And just, you know, it, it's, it's one thing to just walk into a situation and say, oh, cast all your anxiety, mm -hmm. uh, you know, cast all your anxieties on G at Jesus and it, it, yeah, you can jump up in front of people and say, oh, this is what Peter said. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. How does that help anyone when they're like, well, you know, I, my kids just 
they're overwhelmed. They're, by they're overwhelmed. You know, my, my job, I might be losing my job. I don't know how I'm going to make rent. Yeah. I don't know how I'm going to pay the mortgage. Uh, you know, a bag of Doritos now is like $18 or whatever it is at Publix. <laughs> it's something ridiculous. And we don't know how we're going to put food on our tables. How is you just telling me, oh, cast right. your anxieties on Jesus? Like, that, oh, thank you. know, like yeah, the whole thing that I said at the end, you know, with the throw your net on the right side. Oh, awesome. Thanks. Great idea. You know, like, <laughs> why didn't we think of that? Exactly. Like, oh, that's all I had to do. Thanks. You know, there's all kinds of people like that. Well, that will just, you know, like, oh, you have asthma, just breathe. Like, oh, thank mm-hmm. Yeah. But eh, some helpful. big help, but no, it's, you have to dig in and realize like the, that it's, that's the thing that goes back to the discomfort when we disconnect. Mm-hmm. We don't have that prayer life. We don't have, you know, that, that daily devotional time. That's why we need to remain in Jesus, remain in his words, remain in the Bible. That way you have something to remember. Mm -hmm. So when the anxiety attack starts or the enemy starts assaulting you with anxiety, you have something that you can go, oh no, I remember this and I can speak this to my situation. I can speak this scripture to my situation that will stop my suffering and it'll stop the attack from the enemy. I have something that I can remember that God has already done because if he did it back then, he'll do it again. Substance over style and I I said it several years ago. It's interesting that this circles around. The days of Christian cliches are over. I think the times are so difficult for a lot of people that that very thing, if you just toss a Christian cliche out at them, you know, oh, it'll get better, or just just pray about it. People, it doesn't ring the same with everybody these days. They want to know a little bit deeper. They want to know that there's hope. They've got to find the answer. And when you take the time to break that down and give them something like that, uh, you said replace your screen time with Scripture time. Yeah, that's not the first time I've said it either, I, I think. Um, no, it wasn't. I, I don't remember what the other sermon I was that said it, but, it, I mean, it's crazy. You can look at on, uh, and I know you can do it on um, Androids and stuff too, but Apple has it, the screen time. And then what's crazy too is you can literally <clears throat> click on it, you can see which one you're spending the most time on. Mm-hmm. And you can see, you know, how much you're using it each day and where it is. And if you have the Bible app on your phone, you can get uh, either encouraged or immediately depressed by how little of time you use uh, <laughs> the Bible app. And, you know, obviously, you know, you could argue, obviously, if you have a, a paper Bible, mm-hmm. there's that. But um, I, I like having the Bible app for the different devotions and all that stuff yep. instead of trying to just... You know, it's one thing to just read it, but it's also nice to have something to guide you through a passage mm-hmm. and explain it as well. Stay in the Word. When you remain, you remember, and you retain it. And you retain. You retain. That was, I liked that one. You about retain. having the, the whole thing with the lawyer and keeping, a, you know, how you get a lawyer on retainer and they'll The lawyers in the building you. seem to like it too. Yeah. And we're like, yes, have come more on. Than one? Preach, preach up! <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, you know, you think about it. You've got to pay... However much money, it's a lot for, yeah, it's always a lot. It's never (laughs) a little bit unless you get a public defender and that's just not really a good situation, but you know, you get a lawyer on retainer. You will regret. And then you'll, yeah, then you'll regret it. You'll be full of remorse. (laughs) You'll be at the end of your rope. Really? Really bad. Um, But I, I, that was actually something I had written down when I first started writing it. And I didn't have near as much as I had at this point in time, the finished product. But I wanted to hone in on that just because, you know, like I was saying, um, you, you, you spend the money for someone to help defend mm-hmm. you because you can't make your own defense. I mean, you can try. Uh, and I guess if you went to law school or, you know, you had knowledge, yeah, you could defend yourself. But it's a whole lot easier when you have somebody yes. that really knows what they're doing to do it. And so you get them on retainer, which means that, you know, they, they, uh, you, you keep possession of their service, like with the business, mm-hmm. you know, they usually have a lawyer on retainer that way they can just call them up. We do. And that was the exact mm-hmm. point was just, you have your redeem your redeemer on retainer. You can immediately call them up at any time. It's not just keeping the scripture in your heart and replacing mm-hmm. your screen time with scripture heart with uh, scripture time. But knowing that, Jesus and the Holy Spirit, they're always right there mm-hmm. as soon as you need to talk to them, as soon as you need to call on them. They're right there in the situation already with you. And I was listening to, I don't know who it was, because it was one of the Christian motivational videos. And he was making the point of God already 
God already knows what we need mm -hmm. for our situation. He already knows what we need to ask, what we want to ask. Mm -hmm. He knows our needs. He knows our wants. And a lot of times we just we just hang on to it and we don't say anything. We don't he's pray about it. And he's already waiting for the request. He's mm -hmm. waiting for you to ask him about it. He's waiting for you to just bring it to him and, and put a voice to it. There was, um, and I was telling the youth about it last night too, because I was talking to them a little bit about prayer. Because, you know, at a young age, and even for a lot of older believers or, you know, newer but older believers, however, mm -hmm. whatever age you are in life, prayer can be this weird thing where it's like, uh, you know, you see someone that has been doing it a long time and it's like, they're just like, bah, 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 and you're like, well, I can't pray like that. Mine mm -hmm. suck. And then you won't want to pray and you'll want to stay silent. And it's just the way, the best way that I could explain it to the kids was it, it's not like this, this formulaic, you no. know, you got to fill it up with this and fill it up with that. It's literally just a conversation with God. All you need to do is just talk to him as if you're talking to anybody else. And I, I told them the story that I was talking to somebody um, and I won't name them, but they were going through a lot and they were just, they didn't really know what to do about it. And I was like, well, you know, did you did, not to throw out the Christian, Christian cliche, but, but did you bring it to God? Mm -hmm. And they were like, yeah, you know, a little bit, but this and that. And it was kind of like, well, I was like, why don't you just get real with God? Like mm -hmm. stop holding back, empty it all out. And they're like, oh, you, I wouldn't, you don't want me to do that. Like I'll start, I'll start, you know, going off and cussing and I got all this. And I'm like, maybe God is waiting for you to get that real. intimate and that deep and that raw with him to actually enter in to your situation because you're being, you're being too, you're being too ridiculous about your prayers and you're holding everything. We're just going to keep doing all the R's. Really? All the R words, start throwing them in the chat. But remember, prayers are not productive <laughs> when you're not spending time with your provider. Yeah. And then the other side of it, they're not productive when you're not even producing them. Woo. People are wondering, where's God? He's not answering my prayers. And the only time you pray is before you eat a Big Mac. Let your requests be made known unto God. And you have to stay. I mean, like, I try all the time just throughout the day just to say something, just to talk to God, you know, like beautiful, like creation, beautiful mm -hmm. sunset. Thank you for this. Thank you Today's for giving me that. It doesn't have to be this big, crazy thing. I just try to consistently stay in conversation mm -hmm. with the creator. I do it all the time when I'm riding. I thank you, Lord, for a beautiful day. This is a yeah. Wonderful it's, day. Thank I mean, you we for have it. a we have a beautiful world. Mm -hmm. If you really look around, especially if you get, I don't even want to say. I was going to say when you get out of the city, but I like cities. I like visiting larger cities. Not like traffic. Like you go to Atlanta and you just want to drive off, off of the of bridge. <laughs> but you go to somewhere. Um, like that one time we went to Memphis. Kelsey and I, we love going to Charlotte. That's where I proposed to her. Um, and it's crazy because they're like big cities, but mm -hmm. they're not like super busy, at least where we were or when we were there. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like walking downtown, like it's nice to walk downtown. It is like oh, we a do it massive tourist place. So it's kind of annoying and finding parking is annoying and paying for parking is incredibly annoying when you live here and you're already paying taxes. Even well, worse. We're not going to get on that. It's just... The, the so okay obviously You're getting riled. nature is beautiful what god has created is beautiful the reason i like cities is because architecture is also beautiful and god gave us the ability to create things we were supposed to have dominion over the planet and create and so you see with buildings and cars and all this stuff you can find beauty in all of creation which means you can find beauty in the creation that we have created. And that's not like some crazy, like, you know, we're God's type of thing that somebody will want to clip up on the internet. I'm saying mm -hmm. God gave us the ability to create things. He gave mm -hmm. us ideas to create things. He gave us, you know, blueprints and tools and all kinds of everything that, like music. Mm -hmm. Putting music into people's hearts and their minds and just different ideas. We are made to create other things and then everything point back to God. So it's beautiful to me that you can find beauty in nature and trees and all that, but you can also go somewhere and just be in mm -hmm. awe of, I don't know, maybe awe is not the right word, but you can marvel at the things that man has truly created. I mean, and you should be thankful. Look at just like the old buildings with, because Thanksgiving stops the anxiousness. Okay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Where are we at now? Back to the sermon. <laughs> We're out washing under the trees and looking at the robins and the nests. Hey, I was just remaining. You, you were opining. 
how his uh, beauty is. Thankfulness stops the anxiousness. Anxiety is a waste of time. So you said, find what breaks the cycle. So maybe that's a part of it. I felt that was one thing. That was the, uh, as bad as I felt with the sermon or whatever, I felt, I, was, I, I guess I would say I was a little anxious about delivering the line that anxiety is a waste of time because mm-hmm. I don't want it to come across as like a callous remark, you know, like we mm-hmm. discussed earlier of just, you know, oh, just get over it. Don't worry about it. Because you right. can't just tell somebody who has chronic anxiety or literally mm-hmm. a medical condition, just stop worrying about it. Because that's, that's stupid. You're not going to be able to do that. That's, that makes no sense. It's like telling the people with asthma, just breathe. Mm-hmm. Like that, that's not how that works. So I was a little weird about that, but I wanted to hone in on the point that anxiety just kills you from the inside out. Because mm-hmm. you'll spend all of your time worrying about how this is going to go, how they're going to, what are they going to do here? What are they going to do here? Are they going to leave me? What if I say this wrong? What if I do this wrong? What if I lose this? What if I lose that? What if, you know, what if, what if, what if, what if, what if? And you'll spend all your time just worrying instead of living life at all. And you'll just mm-hmm. be completely dead inside. And that's why, and that was the thing that Kelsey said, find what breaks the cycle. And as soon as I was writing about, the Thanksgiving that Paul was talking about. Mm-hmm. I think that is what would break the cycle mm-hmm. because when you're, when you're grateful, you, you have a less amount of time to be hateful. You, uh, you spend more time. If you can spend more time finding things that you're grateful Amen. about, you'll have less time to be complaining about things. Mm-hmm. Um, that was actually, and actually that brings to mind something in the, uh, the do the new you book. I think it was, uh, his daughter. she, gave him something when he started dealing with anxiety or felt overwhelmed or anything like that. And you, uh, what they talk about, you trace your finger, you trace your finger up your hand and down. And each time you go up, name something that you're grateful for. When you go down, name something that you're grateful for. And as you go through that, you might start off hard, but by the time you get to the end, you'll find that you can't stop and you can start naming things and rattling, rattling off things that you're grateful for, and it can turn the situation around. Mm-hmm. And it just gives you like a, a sensory kind of thing, obvious, but also gets yeah, you touch. thinking about things that you're thankful for. Gratitude turns back the grave. That is actually um, a sermon that I, another sermon that I had started. So maybe I'll finish that someday on obviously Lazarus. I got two more things that I want to pull out. Number one, when the devil is looking for someone to devour, Jesus is looking for someone to deliver. You said you were going to steal that one. Oh, I'm definitely stealing that. I, I could preach that for two Sundays. It's That's that, such a good word. Is it not word. true? I mean, the devil goes around mm-hmm. looking for whom he will devour mm-hmm. as a roaring lion. He's not sneaking up on you. He's letting you know. You he hear the roar. Is. He knows you know when he's coming. It's a counterfeit roar. You should roar. know when he's coming. It's not the roar of the Lion of Judah, so it's a counterfeit yeah, roar. Yeah, and how I look at it, too, is uh, he just makes a lot of noise. Mm-hmm. He can't do, I mean, think, okay, so like with Job, all the bad stuff that happened to Job, he still wasn't allowed to take harm his him. life. He wasn't allowed to take his life. Mm-hmm. So he could make all the noise that he wanted, and yes, obviously everything that happened was in, in, uh, depressing and a terrible situation, but he never, uh, Job never gave up on God. He never quit looking away from God. He trusted there was some purpose in it. Amen. And he never lost faith in God, but it also, as bad as that situation was, it also bright, brought to life his self-righteousness mm-hmm. from all of his friends that were telling him all the bad stuff and, you know, oh, surely this is your fault. Job did have a little bit of sin in his life with self-righteousness. And so that whole situation brought that to the surface mm-hmm. so he could, repent of it and turn around and then obviously he was restored and everything but the devil he can make all the noise he wants to at you but he can't actually do anything and for the family room something that i had meant to write down and bring up was i talked about how um in the in the in the passage it talks about how he's after your hearts and your minds Mm -hmm. It, it doesn't say he's after your body your hearts and your minds. I guess you could say the heart is part of your body, but I, I don't think it means like your physical heart. Right. I think more it's the more center of, of who you are. Yeah. You know, your ideals and your character and your feelings. And then, you know, obviously your mind, because like I said, when you can get, uh, how did I put it? When you can get anxiety in your head, you can get uh, fear in your heart yes. or something like that. That's exactly how you said it. Um, 
And one of the things that I had meant to say and I wanted to dive in a little bit on was just obviously your heart and your mind are super important. And I think a lot of us, we put too much uh, stress <coughs> focusing on our bodies. We don't focus enough on our hearts and our minds. You know, mm -hmm. we're supposed to be transformed by the renewing of our minds, but we focus on our body, which obviously we should be focused on our bodies. We should be respecting God's temple and, you know, eating right and exercise and taking care of our, our body. But what I was thinking about when I was studying was, yes, he's after our hearts and our minds. Anything could happen to our body. Look at Job. He was covered in boils and he had mm -hmm. all this stuff. All of this bad stuff can happen to your body. You could be crippled, whatever. But until that gets inside of you, and it crushes your mind or it crushes your heart, not to sound like a jerk and be calloused, but anything that happened to your body really doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. it, it doesn't matter in the, long, in the long run because, yes, it would not be fun if you are used to walking and you lose mm -hmm. a leg or lose both, both legs and you can't walk or if you lost an arm and you can't write and you can't feel, whatever. The good news is all of that is temporary. It's only for a little bit of time. Mm -hmm. And when we get to heaven, we'll all have renewed bodies, restored bodies, eternal bodies that will be perfect without any pain. So that's just, I guess what I'm trying to get at is as bad as it would be to have something happen to your body, it's a lot worse that anxiety can get in your head or anxiety can get in your heart mm -hmm. and the devil comes after your heart and your mind because if he can get you to do that and you can get crushed, you'll stop focusing on God and that will, you know, you'll get disconnected and then eventually you'll just turn away from God and, and lose your faith entirely. Disconnected brings about discomfort. Yeah, somebody should, somebody I said I was going to say two that. more things. I'm lying. I said two more things. Number one, the graphic that you did. Anxiety. Oh, I was like, graphic? I forgot about the, the paper yeah, thing. I didn't. That was a great illustration. I, I think it was one of the home runs of the whole sermon. Uh, anxiety and the, the eyes in the middle. The eye in the middle. I... Somebody yeah, said that was of my really, anxiety. that was their favorite part of the whole sermon. And, the, and being at this, the center of pride. Yes. And they mm -hmm. kind of, in a way, I would say they kind of tie together. Was that like anxiety. on the fly right before church you thought about that? I wanted to write it down. Mm -hmm. I had heard, um, I don't want to take full credit because I had heard something about it, but I turned it a different way and then I wanted to physically write it out so people could see it. Yeah, you were uh, running around back seat stage trying to find some paper yeah. in a... Wasn't that, I think that was the morning of, wasn't it? Right before right. church, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I, yeah, I wanted to, because I wanted something physical. I don't know why. I just wanted something physical yeah. that would remain in people's hearts so they could retain the message and they could remember, and remember it. And then that way, when they're request. dealing with something, they could make their requests and they wouldn't be ruined by what's going on in their lives. And it would become real to them. <laughs> and it would make a really good uh, impression. No. Um, and they would receive. And then as I was going through, I made the point, like I wanted when, cause I knew what was coming up. So I was like, I want to, I want to rip it up at the end. Cause mm -hmm. I, when I was talking about you ripped it and you tossed peace it. was like very dramatic. Peace was like the bodyguard, you know, mm -hmm. at your heart that's letting all the people in or it was all, good. all the stuff is you can't come in. You're like the bodyguard. <laughs> you're like the bouncer at the door. You're not coming in here. No, you're not coming in. No, you're not coming in. And that, yeah, and I wanted to, I, I don't know, I wanted to tear it up. People and remember that. I saw the pride one. I was like, man, I should have torn that one up too, but I'd already tossed it. People remember that stuff. And the last thing that I had was, and this is a very thoughtful thing that, that for me, um, the clip that Kelsey created, um, the way that you finished, when you finished and you walked away from the pulpit and you were standing over here and you were just talking about wrapping it up, you were wrapping it up. <coughs> and at some point in it, you got very, very, it seemed to me you got almost emotional and you, you held your hand over your head and you were talking. That wasn't scripted, but was that a moment where you were kind of like just overwhelmed by what you were saying and you were so thoughtful that you didn't want to, you know, you didn't want to or you do not. Know. I don't. I don't remember why. I don't remember. I was talking, and then I don't know. I just. I, I just grabbed my head, and I think I was. I don't know. The only thing I could say is I was just focused on. It was very interesting. I, I, yeah, I don't. You know, actually, I, I can't even explain because I was going to say I was just trying to block everything out and just speak, but that would be the only thing that I could think. I. I wasn't even. I don't know. I wasn't yeah. thinking. I just did it, and then it was just something. I didn't. I didn't know Something if it was there. a moment where you were starting to feel the emotion of the moment, and you just were trying to to 
maintain your composure or if it was something that you were just really No, just... remember I'm like half robot, so <laughs> <laughs> That no, you were caught up in it. I was probably like, "Oh was my a gosh, very, I need to get from, done with from this." From my <laughs> sitting seat on the front row, it was a very poignant moment um, that really was so relatable because all of the things that you you rolled out. I don't know if I believe this anymore. I don't know if I can continue on anymore. And, and it was just really applicable and to a lot of the people that were there. And one of the gentlemen in specific who sent you the note and said he wanted to be watching tonight was that uh, it really spent it spoke to him. The whole thing, but it was the sermon that he needed to hear that day. So there was a lot of that, and you know, like I told you, I had uh, John from high school, yeah, middle school, actually messaged me, and he he enjoyed it. Uh, I absolutely did not enjoy it, <laughs> but yeah, that was uh, I don't know I, that I guess that was just completely God just speaking through me in that moment because I wasn't I wasn't thinking, and uh, the only thing that was just coming out was. You know, this this anxiety, it's just attacking people. And especially now with, you know, in, in inflation and the economy and everything, we've got all this stuff to worry about. And there's all these reasons that the devil can easily twist our minds into thinking that, you know, oh, God's not in our situation anymore. He's not going to show up. You know, does he even love you? He doesn't mm -hmm. care about you, that kind of thing. And I guess it was just, I wanted to speak, you know, like there is the peace that passes understanding and that is, that is only found in Jesus. And it's it, 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 like the Bible says, it, it passes all understanding is the only reason why you can look at the people that are going mm -hmm. through complete hell and, mm -hmm. you know, they do it with a smile on their face. And that's just because they know yes. the Holy Spirit is in them. Jesus is in it with them. You know, God is, is moving everything around for their good. And no matter what happens this side of eternity, mm -hmm. everything we have to look forward to completely just Amen. wipes the floor clean with anything that can happen in this life. It's not just a young people, old people thing, but as you get older, you see that clearer. I, I, I do. At 62, I see it so much clearer. God is faithful. He's already brought you through so much. He'll bring you all the way through it all. He will. He will show up. He will clean it up. He will come right on time in his time. Trust, trust me, he will. God's and that's, that's the thing too. That, and that was, you know, the, the joke I had made somewhere in the middle or whatever, the beginning of the sermon about all of the situations that these people face in the Bible, you know, and not to make light of anyone's situation, you know, that's listening to this or watching this, nothing that we go through holds a candle to- It's called a light affliction. Anything that goes on. It is a light of And not even, you know, you could just point, you could just point everybody straight to Job mm -hmm. and then be like, well, you know, I'm case, not going to deal that. But how point. many people here are like Joseph and have had their brothers completely beat them up and throw them in a pit and then sell them into slavery? Nobody's <sighs> gone through that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, like nobody has gone to 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 take food and some cheese to their brothers and then saw a nine to however many feet tall Goliath was and then ran out there with some stones towards him. Like mm -hmm. there's all of these completely just insane situations in the Bible. Mm -hmm. You know, Paul that, that there's one for anxiety. Paul knew that he was supposed to, was it on his way to Rome mm -hmm. when the ship crashed mm -hmm. and he had no worries about it because God had already told him he's supposed to go you. there. And We're going to Rome. he knew, and I mean, he shakes the snake off and everything. It was like every situation God has in control. There's always something behind it. And if you're not dead, he's not, he's not done with you. And, you know, just it also on Paul, like when he was in captivity and they had to keep changing the guards that mm -hmm. were chained up to him. But who was the real prisoner there? Because as they're chained to him, he's preaching the gospel to him. So <laughs> who was the real prisoner in that situation? And we think that we're in these terrible things, but when you really step back and you get to the end of it and you look at it from the 30,000 foot view, you see how God was moving each piece yes. of the situation. I mean, you know, Joseph, yeah, it was a terrible thing. And he went into slavery and then he was forgotten in prison after being set up by Potiphar's wife. Uh, and just a terrible time, but it's like, if none of that happened, he wouldn't have been able to get Where food for his family and set them up. You know, like he was the one that came up with the idea and that knew about the famine and that could put uh, all the stuff into preserves that would restore and let people mm -hmm. remain alive. 
uh, and throughout the whole famine. And if, had he not gone through that, mm -hmm. what would have happened? So trust the process. Trust the process. Yes. As terrible as that sounds and as annoying as it is, yep. and it's not fun, it's not fun for anybody. You know, we've got our own stuff that we have to go through. Yes, sir. Walk by and faith. And it's it. the only thing is just walking by faith. And that's the only thing is that the only way to have peace that passes complete understanding that will boggle your mind and will make absolutely zero sense to anyone in your life is Jesus. That is the only way that you will have any sort of peace in anything because he is the way. That was a great sermon. Good job. Bravo. You listened to the I Holy still, Spirit. You did it right. Yeah, I hope so. So the next time you're miserable <laughs> after a sermon, realize God's doing it again. Unless I'm miserable and everybody's like, wow, that was terrible. Then, I'm then praying I'll that just quit. I'll be miserable Sunday. So, No. I'm ready for, uh, yeah, I'm ready to hear that. I'm already looking forward to my next one. Mm -hmm. This is going to be Sunday on Mother's Day. is going to be a little different. Uh, mothers of Others. Mothers of Others. Is that the title? Yeah, that's the title. Oh, are you trying to... You haven't looked at uh, Planning Center yet? No. Oh, you know what I did? Because I moved it. Um, change the title. Yeah. <laughs> change it. Change your scripture. <laughs> We're going to put all the wrong translations on this the This is screen. not right at all. <laughs> Mothers of Others, Romans chapter 16, verse 13 is where I'm going. Um, looking forward to it. It's just a strange little twist of something that just jumped up at me. And I thought, I've got a couple of things I want to do. I want to celebrate Mother's Day this year. I want to really celebrate that. And then secondly, I'm going to go after this word that I'm, that I'm bringing Sunday. So join I'm us, excited. if you will. I'm excited. And then the next Sunday is Pentecost. You're preaching. I am. I'm excited. You should be. You I'm know what excited. we need in this church? A Holy dose Spirit. of the ghost. Oh. I need a holy... Am I singing that? Holy ghost. No, but uh, that's Awaken a good idea. We should, put that on, we should put that on the schedule. I need a love that glows rattling my bones till the... Okay. Who sings that? I do. Uh, thanks, Brandon. Let's Lake. let him do it. Let's let him do it. <laughs> <laughs> We're going over. Uh, but yes, this Sunday, Let's Mother's go. Day. We're all looking forward to it. Make sure you show up. If you haven't invited anybody to church lately, do it. Yes. Uh, especially on this day. Uh, if we share graphics, Kelsey makes great graphics inviting people to church. If y'all would, just share it and, and just pass it along, man. Somebody might see that invitation and think, you know what? I need to be in church. And there was a guy here last Sunday that was, he'd been saying he was going to come for three weeks. He watches us on social media. He said, I've been saying I'm going to come for three weeks and I didn't come. But he said, this Sunday, your Sunday, I had to be here. This was the one that I had to hear. So huh. you never know who's watching and who's waiting for an invitation. Invite them. Our church exactly. and is growing and we will, want it to grow faster. Most people will go to church. They're just waiting for an invite. 86% will come as a result of an invitation. And uh, we definitely need to get back to inviting and just speaking life into people. We don't need any more big events. We need better, better evangelism. evangelism. We need to be speaking and uh, I'm preaching that at Ocean Isle Beach. Commission. Are you stealing that now? I am. Just keep stealing all my stuff. I, oh, yeah. That's Unashamedly. <laughs> Unashamedly, I'm stealing it. <laughs> Whatever. But yes, Mother's Day, if, uh, if you can't make it or you're on vacation, watch us live for, you know, an hour or so. But happy, happy early Mother's Day. Sunday morning, 10 a.m., we're having the donut truck. Come for uh, a donut. Come for donuts and or come for Jesus and stay for donuts. <laughs> I almost said that backwards. I don't want, <laughs> don't wait want a minute, any, wait a minute. any more controversy. Come for Jesus and stay for the jelly roll. <laughs> there you go. Hey, jelly donuts are amazing. See? I love jelly donuts. So come for Jesus and stay for the jelly. With that, thank you for <laughs> watching <laughs> our... Uh, ridiculousness as we completely fall apart and off the rails at the last moments of our lives. <laughs> last 30 seconds. But uh, yeah, that is the family room again. Thank you all for coming out today. We'll see you Sunday, 10 a.m. Happy Mother's Day. Hey, I hope that message spoke to you today. I want to say thank you to everybody who is involved at Family Church and those who help support this ministry. If you would like to get more involved, you can click the link in the description or head to our website, familychurch.social. We would love to connect with you, and you can find all of our social media platforms on our website. Also, if this message spoke to you in any way today and you liked it, consider sharing it on your social media in any way that you would like so that we can help reach those far from God and return them to the arms of the Father. We want to see God work through you. We love you. Thanks again for listening. God bless you.